Okay, yeah, I'll cut the, the, the first thing, but... I know, but you should start people waiting. Okay. okay. So you need to pull your hands. Oh. Yeah, so... Yeah. Just, just, just sit and let's start. Okay, good. Yeah. So, okay, uh, hello, guys. So today we have our second attempt of the, uh, our podcast about alternative economy. And uh, I hope that today we'll, we'll do the, the whole thing because I have so many interesting questions and we covered just couple, uh, some of them in, in previous time. So let's quickly uh, go through the question what is alternative economy uh, overall and how you understand this. And let's start with, with Keith. This uh, so. Uh, what does alternative economy mean for me? How do you understand what is this? Uh, so, alternative economy uh, for me is basically like a way where you can network uh, to acquire resources that you need. Um, as an example, um, like on Simbi, you can exchange your services um, with other people using this alternative currency. There's many different types of alternative alternative currency uh, systems out there and it helps people create value but do you think something else but exchange of services and maybe goods is also can be considered as alternative economy yes uh, what, what else um, like like as an example like ride sharing right if there was a ride sharing app out there that allowed me to give a ride to my friend right uh, even for like social credit right and then later on when I need help someone from the network can provide a ride for me do you think anything more broad, let's say something which is not traditional economy, mm -hmm. is alternative? So if thinking in, in that perspective, what else can be considered alternative economy? Um, well, even services like cooking, right? So you could have an alternative cooking economy where someone could come to your house and you cook them a meal. And then later on, someone from the network would invite you over for a meal also. But... Uh, what I'm, what I'm feeling, in order to kind of replace or to become significant yep. in terms of uh, alternative economy, it, ah. it should be designed in a way so that it can replace eventually the traditional. Because yep. what, what we're discussing right now sounds like just kind of like very early drafts or early initiatives, but let's say, do you feel that... So how can alternative economy actually replace? What? Yeah. Okay, so well, I, think, I believe well, what you're referencing... Well, then, can you go back to the original question? Like, where do alternative economies stem from? Where do they come from, right? Where okay. are they created? Because if we understand that, then we can know, like, what instances will come up, right? So is it created out of the need of the fact that currency-based markets are not necessarily fulfilling needs? Uh, yes, that's, that's true in some aspects. And also, what I was going to bring up is the gifting economy, right? which is basically where you're taking your excess capacity and you're able to uh, provide that to other people. So it's taking all of this um, surplus of things that are valuable, mm -hmm. um, may not necessarily be in the terms of money, but it's in regards to um, uh, services, um, what other value? Uh, food, clothing, shelter, you know, uh -huh. basic necessities, those okay. are really important. Okay. okay, so the idea is that once we figure out basic necessities, then we can move further and actually talk about replacing the big uh, layers of aspects of traditional economy, like, I don't know, like food logistics, you know, f uh, fuel uh, supply or something like that, like big stuff that can affect big, like, let's say cities or like small villages, right? So, okay, uh, Alex, uh, what do you think? Uh, repeat the question real quick. So, uh, how do you understand what is alternative economy and what needs to be done in order for alternative economy to actually start replacing the traditional economy? Uh, I think, well, in order for it to replace traditional, like regular economy, it would definitely need to uh, cover basically everything. It would need to have a much more grounded basis. For example, like Simbi, as of right now, it's very it's very narrow. It doesn't have a lot of different things. I think if they if they changed their service up a little bit to expand, maybe get interacting with a couple of charities or something, uh, just something so that um, 
You also have access to like basic needs, like you can get food and water from Simbi. I think that would be a way uh, to actually get it to start replacing. Otherwise, like for now, it's more of a uh, it's more of a farmers market sort of situation for the time being. And uh, okay, do I understand you correctly? If once people will be able to actually buy food from for virtual currency, then this is the point when we can talk about replacement. Uh, yes. Well, I mean, uh, not just food. I mean, you know, uh, I guess it would be a bit of a stretch, but we might also need to figure out like housing and uh, utilities. Yeah. But at the most basic level for it to be actually very, uh, uh, for it to be widespread, it needs to be able to purchase food and water and a couple of like basic household, household products. Okay. Uh, Julia, what is your uh, input? Yeah, so alternative economy is this idea of creating a system where everyone feels included and the opportunity to to satisfy all their needs and possibly even more. So it's this idea of able to for each person to feel more freedom in having what they need, which is something we don't currently have as much because there are some people in the world who feel left out. And so whoever can can make the most people feel like they don't they they can get their their needs satisfied whatever system will work that will be the alternative economy mm -hmm. so julia yes. what, what you're saying is um people need to feel like they add value and that's what they're looking for in these alternative economies Yes, that they can create. That yes, they add value. That they can create value, and, and that it's that the the process of exchange is more is more clear, and that they don't feel like they're being taken advantage of, advantage of, and that they they feel like they're they are they can easily provide the currency, like you're saying, um, value. They can give a value. But, mm -hmm. Okay, but is currency that important so in my no, no, no. Current terminology currency can be like um also like time you know so like currency is just a terminology in past people would didn't have currency they used um goods they exchange uh milk for for t a, t a table or so, well, probably not a table <laughs> but, uh, for, for something of similar to equal value mm -hmm. So it looks like uh, before we have uh, some very, very trustful source to, to store uh, our trust. So I, I'm talking about maybe blockchain, maybe not, we'll see. Uh, but right now we have to use the currency concept, right? Uh, but we are kind of approaching the, the, the state when we will be able just to to know that this person is trustworthy because we know all the history of all the all the reviews and transactions that these people actually did uh, a person did and and so uh we can we can just simplify maybe, maybe this will help to actually approach this uh um the spread of re alternative economy because right now i feel the use of this kind of virtual currencies is kind of still can cause greed actually that's why my experiment on Simbi was actually to to charge and to ask for only one Simbi for all of my services, and so because so this can eliminate greed at all, right? Uh, but in, in, instead, you just so let's say people um, they apply on my requests only if they really interested in in what I'm requesting or offering, not because they need a particular amount of Simbi. So so what do you think, Akit? How this can work? Uh, yeah, and I think that's um, that brings up community currencies, right? So there's alternate um, uh, uh, currencies and alternate exchanges, and then there's uh, more like community focused and community based. And I think that um, the community based uh, currencies that are out there kind of got elbowed a little bit by things like Bitcoin, right? Because a lot of people are investing in speculative currencies, right? the value goes up, then you can sell your bitcoins and you can profit off of that. And I think that's something that we're seeing a lot more in the market right now. And it's taking away from alternative currencies and community currencies. Um, at one point, it does help a little bit because it lets people know that, hey, there, there are other forms of exchange out there, you know, that people are using. And that kind of changes the mindset because some people 
they don't know about alternative currencies, and they only use money, right? And if they can't pay for it, then they have to work to, to earn money in order to get what they need. Instead of being able to, you know, be adaptable, um, you know, helping other people out, you know, uh, is another way to, you know, receive services from people. Um, you know, just like, uh, just like a family, right? You have everybody in your family, and your uncle might be a mechanic, uh, your dad might, might cut lawns, and as their networks are growing, more people on the block, you know, would be more inclined and likely to help them out if they ever needed anything. Okay, Liz, what do you think? Um, it's interesting because, uh, well, one, it's like saying essentially that our current system of currency is not necessarily working correctly, right? There's, there's something that's not fitting the need of our society. And what's interesting to me is more of like figuring out where is the value of markets, you know, and then connecting the people that are needing to communicate in that sense. But then having a platform that clearly states these are what's valued, right? Like saying these are perimeters of things that can be valued. So having one symbi, how do you know what two symbis means? Yeah. How do you know what three means? And because I don't think greed can take place unless everybody understands what comes with the value of that. So if you don't necessarily have like, you know, one, two, three, four items that can be qualified as that and you don't have a definition, then it turns into this marketplace where it can evolve into all kinds of different definitions. Um, and it may be confusing. Mm -hmm. So it's like really figuring out, you know, what is the end need of creating an alternative economy? And if it does replace our current cur currency system or if it's a complement, you know, is it something that's added in addition to what's happening in our currency system? Or are there certain things in you know, our current exchange system that are not doing, you know, doesn't really give value, so money doesn't necessarily give enough value for somebody, what are we doing to kind of like push it into that direction? So that's, that's where I'm curious as a newcomer, how do we introduce new alternative economies to a mass of people who have never seen it before and you let them easily be educated on it so they understand how they can use it? Uh, Julia, what do you think? Should the virtual currency be uh, interchangeable to real money? I definitely think it's the beginning for, for to become adaptable. A more a lot of people um, might want to, you know, try it out. And you know, anything that's flexible often is easily adapted. So if people feel like they can interchange between either money or not, because people these days do need money. So at some point they're gonna need money. And if they can make that that exchange into money, that is value. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm thinking I'm looks like about in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're just not ready yet to to start uh, uh, to rethink uh, the value of the, let's say goods, right? Let's say, how many simbi is chair? If we compare the chair, let's say chair is 20 bucks, let's say if uh, 20 bucks is, I don't know, uh, 100 simbi that we can think in that, in that uh, you know, formula. But if we just like uh, dis disconnect from, from real money and let's say if we take, say that, okay, one chair is, is one simbi or one share is a pack of uh, banana so uh, you know like just like just start thinking maybe like we were thinking before before the money existence right uh, when we had just like maybe trade uh, barter based economy so people somehow uh, was able to figure out how to actually exchange goods without uh, this uh, intermediate um, intermediate um, a medium like money right uh, so okay Alex do you think it's feasible to to return to this stage when we are just rethink the value of things without connecting to money uh, sorry so again there's something there's a, a a car in the background that's like blurring out sound a little bit yeah okay so the uh, easy question do you think it's feasible uh, eventually to to disconnect from measurement of everything in money and just and uh, rethink the concept of value to be able to do exchanges without connecting to some particular amount? Uh, I would say no. I think money is very 
uh, is very necessary to how we, sorry, there's like an echo on the, it's like throwing me off, on, like my mic is going through and I'm hearing myself talk through your microphone, so it's weird, sorry, it, my, my little nitpicks, but I think it's very necessary for currency to exist uh, just on the current scale that our society is. Um, like a bartering system ideally would work quite well in small interconnected communities, uh, but on a societal level, it it cannot work. Like in so like uh, Sergey, what you said with um, with it, it, us used to being able to uh, work under a bartering system that was under where we didn't have a lot of real governmental structure. We didn't have a lot of outside things. Now we gotta we have to pay for school. We have to pay for water, food. We have to pay for everything, and I think uh, doing bartering exchanges uh, for everything that we could possibly need would make everything uh, complicated to the point of uh, complete shutdown. So I think having at least a valuation of money, while it is... Um, Alex? Uh, Julia, are you here? I can hear it, yeah. So, looks like it's... Can you hear Alex? I cannot hear Alex, no. I just see the, the picture that's um, still. Um, Fall back in. Can you please send him a message that... Yeah, that's what I'm, gonna do, so I'm doing. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So, Akiv, uh, what do you think about this? Uh, well, I'd like to bring up participation-based economics, right? So, um, as he was referring to, you know, how are we going to pay f for schools and for education, right? So, participation-based economics is something that we already have in our society, except for instead of looking at time, we're looking at money, right? So, in order to, to raise healthy, intelligent children, we need school teachers, right? We need good, qualified school teachers. Um, so we're basically paying them with money, but there's a lot of schools out there that what they do is they have parents come in, right? So every parent provides like four hours, right? Mm -hmm. And the parents teach ceramics, they teach music, they teach computer programming, you know? And this is really good because it cuts down on how much uh, money the school has to spend for teachers and it, it allows them to um, basically teach the kids different things, right? And it's all using a, a time-based model. And I think that that's really cool because the kids, when they're young, right, are able to get exposed to so many different things, you know? So So it looks like you're promoting just like time-based uh, kind of economics without connecting to any currency at all, R real or virtual, right? And do you think it can work on big scale? Yes, absolutely. So... Um, one of the schools that I'm talking about, it's actually in Cupertino, and it's a very popular school. A lot of CEOs send their send their kids there, you know, and it's it's different from uh, you know traditional uh, school because it's more hands on, and you get to learn from so many other people, right? And instead of just having one teacher that has one set way, you have many many teachers, which are the parents, right? which are able to apply what they've learned and to be able to pass that on to the next generation. It was, do you think it, it can work for any kid, including your kid? Yeah, so um, my son is three years old and I think there's a lot of school programs out there, there are co-ops, where parents do come in and participate. Um, the really great qualifier for that, um, I'll give a good uh, example. When I was in Finland um, for graduate school, um, one of the families I stayed with, um, on Fridays, they would have children come home to each other's house, household. So meaning you have a visiting friend coming home and having dinner with the family. What the um, incentive behind that was uh, is that it prevented um, bullying because then the children actually saw how the child lived and was able to connect empathy or have empathy towards that child and knowing who they came, where they came from, who they are, and that they understood them. So there's a lot more than just the time piece. There's a lot more benefits that come in there that are ten times more valuable than just money. And you see the same thing with volunteering, too. You have a lot of people who can give money um, to charities or they can give their time. And a lot of the 
things that these charities and organizations need is people's time. It's not necessarily just the money. The time is actually more important because the reality is, is nothing gets done if you don't have a person there manning or being a person that knows and understands what's happening within an organization. So the same thing with these schools is that, yeah, absolutely, there's more than just one benefit. There's the time sharing, but there's also the cultural pieces that um, are very beneficial. So I think it does work. Um, the reality, though, is that if everybody is sitting in a corporate job for you know 60 to 70 hours a week, they don't have the time to give. And so it's more figuring out where are the values within a cultural system. So you could go into a completely different country and this may work 10 times better than it would in a country where their value is actually placed on their time. Another really good example is um, we did a lot of, uh, when I worked in Japan, we did a lot of studies on looking at um, cultural differences of how cultures prioritize, how they spend their time and money. And one of our campaigns had to do with um, saving time. And we sat down and talked to all the different cultures. If you go in the U.S., saving time to a typical um, middle, mid-age um, uh, white male, to them that means they can spend more time. Um, if they save time at work, that means they can save more or spend more time with their family. And so that was the trade-off. But if you go into Japan, if you save somebody time, that means they have more money. And so to them, the money was more important than necessarily that value of the family. So there's differences there that I think that may um, need, need to be considered in scaling um, and, and contributing or building any of these ecosystems. Okay. Uh, Julia, are you here? Yeah, I can oh, hear. So what would you do if you are given a basic income? That would be what I do. I would... Um, study a lot of things that I'm interested in, that's what I would do, I, that I don't, um, but, but yeah, I think if with a basic income we would have the freedom to just be able to, to do a lot of things we'd like, we'll be able to travel more freely perhaps, um, perhaps no depends on what the structure of the government would be around the income, but, um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of our decisions are around, are around money, and so we would have less more freedom from what we do. It would be more intrinsic motivation, which is the enjoyment of doing what you do for the sake of it, not for, not for doing something on other, for other reasons. But um, I definitely agree with what she was saying is because I think that if we just make it um, one type of currency, then we are almost going back to what the money problem is. But, but creating multiple ways to give value and receive value is 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 definitely going to help us in the future it's that multiple ways so that people can more easily find service to give and receive that makes sense can you hear me yeah we hear you we're just uh, checking the, yeah. uh, and also the other question too other comment about like scale small scale and large scale like what for example why is it that you know we there are these places where like in israel where people you know, have like this little community called kibbutz, and they just, they are like completely self-sustainable. Like why isn't it some, someone takes these communities and tries to expand what they are or, or just change a little bit what they are? So it's like, I'm not saying we have to model those at all. I'm just saying it's like, there are places all over the place. And so maybe one approach might be is to just take those small places and just try to expand some of their methods to the close, close regions. Um, and so forth. Okay, uh, do we have Alex? Yeah, I'm back. Okay, uh, how about you? What would you do if you are given, let's say, $1,000 per month? Uh, $1,000 per month? Uh, definitely savings, a lot of savings. I put most of it, uh, at least, like, I mean, I keep my basic uh, necessities, like, around, but uh, put a good amount into savings and then use the rest and... Um, just take my time to improve myself as a person, build my talents, and like get myself out there. Uh, just learn things, and um, that's that, that's most of it. You know, just learn as much as I can. Uh, do you guys agree that uh, basic income? Okay, now what do you think? If basic income is uh, beneficial for any person in the world, or maybe only for those who know already what to do uh, with their time, 
How about you? Keith, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I think a universal basic income uh, would benefit a lot of people, but it depends how it's structured. You know, because um, as we've seen before, um, the more wealth you have, the easier it is to accumulate it, right? So now if we're providing a universal basic income for people um, as a capitalist, uh, those guys would be making a lot more money and they might end up extracting all of that value, right? And we could be in the same predicament, like, oh, the universal basic income isn't enough now because all the prices went up, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that alternative uh, economies are really important because it separates from the market system, right? So it has its own value structure, and when you have a, a currency and you back it by, like, let's say the U.S. dollar, then you take on the characteristic, characteristics of the parent currency, right? So well, I think... Um, well, money, right? Mm -hmm. Because now your your currency will fluctuate in the market. So a fluctuation could end up taking everything down, right? And shutting you down. You won't have enough money. Inflation. To, yeah, exactly. So in order to se to separate that, that's why I, I'm a big believer in uh, you know currencies not being backed or not being sold for money, right? Not having an open marketplace where that can be uh, bought and sold because that can basically. Uh, the shifts in the market will also affect that currency, and anybody who's adopted that currency will have the same issues they have with their bank account. You know, so, it'll just lose value. So it looks like neither this basic income nor bitcoins and all of these cryptocurrencies, which are backed by money again, right? At least they fluctuate again, mm -hmm. especially right now. So all of that is not something that we can hope on, right? We should, we should, we need something completely different. So, because you know, right now this um, this hot topics about this uh, Bitcoin prices and stuff, and um, also I wanted to discuss this uh, kind of ICO, which is initial coin offering, which is also the, the concept of how you can let's say fund uh, fund something, let's say your project, right, mm -hmm. your startup, by selling kind of share. Uh, as, far, as as far as I understand, I'm trying to understand how this works, but. Looks like you can sh uh, sell or share virtual currency. Let's say you create in the same time new virtual currency, right? And you sell it. Let's say you need ten thousand or a uh, thousand dollars to to start your startup, right? So you create I don't know a uh, thousand of uh, ten dollar uh, virtual currency, but then this this is on the market, so the price can go up. Let's say if your startup is going up, right? So it's kind of good that you have your money and uh, your backers, their uh, investment go up so then can sell. So this looks good, but in the longer perspective, all of that can turn against all the projects, right? Yes. That's what you're anticipating. Yep. Yeah, so there's a lot of pump and dump that's going on right now, right? So we have so many different coins coming out, right? And what, what I've seen before uh, which is really interesting is now uh, instead of creating uh, like a different type of Bitcoin and doing an ICO, what people are doing now is they're just copying the person's website and just changing the name, and it's basically the the same the same model. You know what I mean? And I don't think that that's good, and I I don't want to see my friends invest money in something, um, you know, just to go bankrupt. So you know I've seen that a lot is when the market gets high, everybody sells. And even if that organization doesn't even have a product, right? They don't even have anything developed yet. People will invest because a lot of people are afraid, right? They're afraid of their future and they're like, well, well, how am I going to make money in the future? How am I going to retire, right? And this is, this is uh, very important. And I think it's a big concern for a lot of people. So and this brings up something that um, is on the back of my mind. And this is going to go back to the basic emotional piece of this, mm -hmm. of this whole ecosystem. The reality is, is that we're all very inherently selfish within the system right now, right? So we're thinking about what I can do to survive on my own, right? At some point, I think in, if these alternative systems are gonna work, we have to change our mindset of how what that means, right? So meaning, if I receive $1,000, how am I gonna use that to help 10 other people? Mm -hmm. um, and am I gonna use that in the direction of their businesses or is it more in the sense of knowing that there's more than that, right? Like knowing that if I can give them a home, then they can produce not only a business, but do 10 times more than that, right? So looking at things of more in the perspective of like, okay, I can think of my own retirement, but there's also this piece where my community is more of an investment than anything else. 
And right now, I think that's the missing piece, is that we don't really see our community as valuable um, in regards to investment of, like, making sure that it's surviving. You know, like our city is, you know, right now in San Francisco is a huge problem. Our socioeconomic differences are like this. There's huge differences between the rich and poor, and it's not just obvious, it's sickening. It's sickening to see that you have somebody drive down the street with a Ferrari and somebody right next to them, like, not have a home and barely have something covering them for them to sleep at night. Uh, are there ways to, to for greed to start kind of decrease or decay? I don't know, uh, because, like, looks like right now money is the, the cause of the greed. Right, uh, and any money, virtual or real, will always cause greed. Right, so do you think that there are ways? Uh, I don't think it's just um, currency. I think it is the fact that we don't have any basis of saying, okay, I take only what I need, mm -hmm. and then if I have extra surplus, I share. Mm -hmm. Right, so that could be anything. So if even our, you know, our currency system could work better in that sense if we knew that like anything that you get this extra is something that should be shared across the place right so it comes down to more i think ethics um of what we're basically teaching our children and how we're raising each other you know i think it's a completely different area that i don't think anybody has explored it's the same thing that when it comes to you know mental health issues you know that it stems from a problem that is bigger than just being defined as being sick, it's possibly from all the other pieces of what's going on in our whole ecosystem. Actually, you know what I'm thinking, so you're comparing this to ethics as higher level, and I see even higher level, which is just education. Mm -hmm. So maybe education is actual alternative economy, which should be implemented uh, for the first uh, thing. Yeah, and right? what you're seeing right Not now. currency. Yeah, and you're seeing huge changes right now in the education world, right? So you're seeing a lot of these platforms um, pop up where you're having people be able to have access to live online training and education for free. Um, you're having, you know, actual like college programs investing into these courses. You're having like, um, you know, there, I was learning about another one the other day in Pakistan where. You have just certifications for basic level things like teaching um, nursery school to elementary school where it's now online so that nobody actually has to go into a, a, you know actual university. They're having to do it online and they can localize wherever they are and using that. So yeah, there's huge differences, a lot of changes um, that I think at some point you know our education is not going to be something that we're going to have to pay for. Okay, but uh, okay, I want to hear from external guests. So Julia. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's possible to learn empathy online? <laughs> Julia, are you here? Okay. Alex, mm -hmm. what do you think? Um, repeat the question for me. Uh, is it possible to learn empathy or uh, comprehend empathy online? Online. Online um, education. It's hard to say, honestly. It's a hard question, right? It's hard, yeah, but, <laughs> but what Liz was saying was only like one part of the brain, right? Logical part, like knowledge, skills, and uh, development, whatever, mathematics and uh, stuff. But uh, we still need a second part of, the, of our brain to still be uh, developed and evolved, right? Uh, a really, okay, a really cool course I took was um, understanding uh, sustainability in Indi India with work with for economics. So essentially how they set up the class is they had videos where you followed an Indian woman in their day when she started when she woke up and you watched everything that she did throughout the day all the way to the end. So you understood when she went into a grocery store why she didn't purchase certain things because she was only given a certain amount of money and then she couldn't read so she couldn't understand if there was any discount or anything so she always did her same process. So, not that this is empathy, but it's absolutely a way for us to see into other people's life. And it's just the same case as I just gave a while ago with the example of having a child go into somebody's home. If we can virtually create something where there is that piece, I think there's a little empathy there that can be learned. Um, so actually what we are doing right now, if people are observing what we are doing, yeah. we're kind of trying to understand why we are doing this. 
and maybe something can trigger in their you know mind or uh, soul and so they might uh, start to at least think about what's the alternative, alternative economy and about empathy and everything like what we are talking about right now so this kind of reality show uh, style courses mm -hmm. can help or mm -hmm. at least help to, uh, to start approaching this right so yeah what do you think you uh, yeah, I think videos uh, definitely uh, a good source of media to help build empathy in people. As an example, uh, there's this artist, I forget his name, and uh, what he did is he took a mold of someone sitting down, right? Like, uh, like sitting with their legs crossed, and uh, he created a mold and he put a plastic bag around it, right? And he set this out and he watched people walk by, right? So if you saw someone, whether they're homeless or not, because you can't really see their physical, uh, their... Um, like what they really look like underneath the plastic bag, right? Mm -hmm. And some people would walk over there and they'd shake it. Hey, man, are you okay? And they'd tear the bag open, mm -hmm. you know, because they're afraid. They're like, why is someone in this bag? Mm -hmm. And other people were just too busy mm -hmm. and they just walked by, right? And if you, if you watch it, it totally looks like there's a person in a plastic bag, right? So anybody who has, um, you know, a good sense of morals would want to go help that person, right? And I think that when you see videos like this, you're like, wow, you know, this is very impactful. And I think those impactful videos are very important. And if we want to um, have a society where people, you know, have empathy, then they need to see these things. You know, it's very important. To keep doing these social experiments and keep... Like yeah, because a lot of people take things for granted and they feel like they're in constant competition, right? So... Um, instead of co-producing value and working together, a lot of people are um, working against themselves, right? They're working against themselves, and I think that that has a big uh, systemic uh, part to it, an aspect. Uh, what do you think, what do you, th what do you mean work against themselves? Uh, so, like, as an example, right? Um, here in the United States, what they keep pushing on people who have a little bit of wealth is to buy a house, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you want to buy a house, then you know, um, it's kind of looked at as an, an, an investment and something good for your family, right? But what it does when you buy a house that's overvalued, because we, we have a huge market problem here, right? Um, you buy an overpriced house, then that means the person who lives next door to you, who's retired and who's on, living on fixed income, the property value goes up and they have to pay more, right? So what it does is it causes people to gentrify each other and push each other away. And I think that, you know, this is a very bad aspect of our society. And the people who are getting paid are um, the banks, uh, the mortgage lenders, you know, all, the, all these people. Of the property. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's bad and it's not a good way to co-produce value together. Yeah, I remember, okay, I remember being in business school and one of the classes we took was about investing, right, finance. And um, there's this idea that you save all your money, you know, a dollar that you have today, and you can save, you can make a lot of money on it in the future, right? But if you have a future where you have a lot of money and you're old, you can't walk around, you, you, um, and eventually you die, yeah. that money is a waste. It just went to nothing. So there was no value yeah. that was created outside of just what you were doing in your savings. There was nothing that was added to the community. There was nothing that added to your children. There was nothing like you didn't spend that money to have an experience. And I think that that's where it's going to be moving into. I think we're going to start understanding experiences are going to be more of the value going forward, right? And so it's really capitalizing on that with alternative communities. Cool. So, Julia, it looks like you're here. So do you have any, anything to add to that? Well, I didn't hear Sajimia. What was the last thing she said? So, okay, I started uh, with uh, how we can learn empathy uh, using internet. So, let's say, rethinking re of education. So, all aspects of yeah. education, right? Not only like algebra and, and physics, but, uh, but also something that we suppose our kids are being taught in school. But I'm personally not sure. Uh, and so, how is it possible to rethink education in a way so then you can learn uh, all kinds of stuff, including such some, something such as empathy and moral, uh, something basic moral stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, starting from your, from your first question, um, you know, most people do not even know what alternative economy is. 
<laughs> Most people are not even thinking about what alternative economy is. And when it comes to empathy and things like that, I think it's more of a matter of people feel like, you know, if they have something to lose, they're not going to be empathetic. People are afraid, usually. Um, they, like, uh, and often, like, in psychology experiments, when some, they're, they've, they've seen that sometimes if a person is in trouble, and there are you know, 20 people that on that scene, no one will come to help that person because they think that everyone is, is someone else is going to do it. Versus if there are like five people on a scene, someone will go and help them. So that's another reason why we can think that education, so that's another reason why we think that maybe it's my way to start a small scale so people can understand they need to help each other and not think that everyone else is helping the other person. Um, and but, but the other thing about it, I mean, you can, there's so many ways to add well, videos are usually the best thing. You know, just being around people. Yeah. Okay, Alice, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, not anything I can say, really. <laughs> uh, so, uh, would you be interested to spend your again basic income or just free time to build something like a, a system for for alternative economy in terms of let's say for education or for um, so anything that can help to, to to promote and spread alternative economy uh, concepts yeah yeah definitely I think that would be very beneficial for the world to have more of it so let's say if you were to create a different symbi, how would it look like? Oh, what would it look like? Um, that's difficult to say because building something like that from the ground up is a little bit of a it, it's a bit of a daunting task, you know, building an entire economy. But I'd say at the if I were to suggest something to actually improve symbi in its current state, it would be. Uh, to actually have access to being able to buy food or uh, water and all of that and having uh, it interact if it were to like interact with charities and other uh, places so that it can like fuel the economy itself and so people have they can work on uh, more community building projects because in its current state it's only on an individual basis mm -hmm. it's not very um, it's not all that community oriented so for example like uh, take the boy scouts or something they'll go out and they'll like uh, they'll build a house for somebody or paint a bunch of fences i think we need something like that to actually uh broaden city as a realistic like or well a broader concept and having um, it more available to more uh different types of services and goods because as in its current state, it's mostly um, avail only available to people who are able to, who are creatives or can produce certain products or have valuable skills and not everybody has that. There's not very, there's not really a market for unskilled labor, mm. which I think would be uh, necessary to make it ideal, really. Um, I'm just thinking, uh, so in, the, in this concept of replacing um, let's say, uh, traditional, let's say, uh, economy in terms of, let's say, just food and water, right, with alternative. Let's say you expect to receive food and water for, for, for one of your services, but still, this water needs to be somehow pumped or cleared and food needs, food needs to be grown. So how this can uh, connect in like a circle of things that going back and forth and uh, kind of fulfill each other so keep what do you think oh yeah so circulating value within a community right and I think this is a, a very important aspect um, communities need to work together um, let's say you have a, a cluster of cities right um, and each one of these cities produces something one produces water one produces food right um, it, it ends up creating a micro economy where, where these cities need to now exchange with each other right and within these cities, you have uh, you know small different community groups that are all participating, and I think this is um, a very important thing.
that needs to be done. And I think it's kind of like the next uh, stage in evolution as our society is moving forward. Um, and with regards to Simbi, I think that their core focus should be on communities and being able to empower a group of people to be sustainable, right? Even if it's one aspect, like sustainable food, right? You're able to basically uh, grow food at zero marginal cost, right? Mm -hmm. And now you have, an, you have an asset and a resource that you can exchange or share or mm -hmm. give away to another community, right? And this is how you build uh, supportive networks of mutual aid. Okay, I have an important question. So how is it possible to build an iPhone with alternative economy? Um, let's see. How is it to build an iPhone? Well, why would you need to build an iPhone for an alternative economy? A lot of uh, e e economies and communities out there don't need technology. Uh, would you be interested to live in a world where, okay, let's say you can give, get food and water uh, without money, but not access to internet, computers, and, and all this stuff. Would you be agreed to just get rid of all that? Ah, uh, yeah, actually. Um, you know what? I think that, um, you know, the phones and things and technology and cars that can drive themselves, they're cool, right? But all it does is it speeds up our life, right? Because now you're, you have like an autonomous car, now you're trying to do work while your car is driving you to work, right? Or to some place. And I think that our society, people focus way too much on, um, you know, working a lot, right? And not being able to enjoy their time. Um, wait, wait, wait. Uh, computers and, and internet is yep. access to, again, to education. Yes, as education. So we need yes, yes. So, yes, that's very but, important. But right now they're produced in China, let's say, right? Uh -huh. uh, and using money and uh, traditional economy, yes. right? So how is it possible to produce uh, MacBooks and iPhones and all this stuff without uh, money and... Uh, easy. Uh, maker spaces and hacker spaces. Okay, but resources. Uh, silicon. People and time. Silicon. So somehow you need to get access yep. to silicon, yep. right? And silicon is not everywhere in the world, mm -hmm. right? That's true. So it looks like the only way is that the country who has silicon should also in, be involved into all this alternative economy movement and so just provide necessary resources like aluminium, silicon and stuff uh, in exchange for something else. Yep. Or recycling, uh, implementing a community-wide recycling program to uh, extract the silic silicon and um, different uh, metal alloys that you would need that are already um, filling up landfills, you know? extremely toxic though it's the most toxic of all industries for us to go into and like try to figure out how to scrap yeah it's um it's but also it's the most value like if you go in and look at um the different if you look at any recycling um you can get the most amount of money out of the, these materials mm -hmm. out of all of them cardboard is pretty high too surprisingly yeah. but yeah if you go in and kind of look at all the different ways that things are put together like that this is yeah. the most toxic and probably the dirtiest part of our world right I mean, the, and, the and MacBook is toxic? Yes, right? extremely. And who's to say that a, a group of people in a community won't build a, a more sustainable type of computer, right? By building it with different components and parts. This would be super tricky right now, I think, right? This is like top-notch technology right now, and uh, mm -hmm. we, we don't know how to rethink it in a way so then it can use less toxic material. Well, a lot of that information uh, has to be released publicly, right? Yeah. Okay. So the yeah, the transparency and resource sharing and knowledge sharing are the most important thing. So if we were going to build a sustainable iPhone, right, we would ask everybody to participate. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that it would be like a global movement to build a sustainable phone. So maybe we will not need silicon and all this stuff, the toxic stuff, and it's still possible to build something which it can still be in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Right, so it can have batteries still, but yes. not toxic, not lithium and stuff. Right, maybe we don't know, but okay. So let's uh, we have not much time left, so let's talk about our uh, individual projects of how we personally contribute to alternative economy. So, I'm personally a very big fan uh, of Simbi and uh, I use it a lot, but also I think my personal goal is to combine. Uh, different parts of alternative economy and to raise awareness of each other. Let's say uh, on uh, this week I met a guy and he's working on a re really interesting project and I, I was uh, hoping that he will join us maybe next time. 
He's building a service for only for uh, lending and gifting. No currency involved at all. You just have goods and you just search for, you can, you can post your goods and it's really easy. And then then uh, when someone else uh, searches for st some good, then it, the system kind of connects people. And so then you can just gift or, or lend. And, and, and he can actually pro pro uh, prove how, how it works. So I, I need a DSLR camera. And he said, hey, I have. And, and he gave me uh, for one month. So, uh, so I don't know, uh, maybe he just wants this to work and that's why he gave, but uh, in, in reality the... So, I, I haven't heard about this before, right? So I feel that I can uh, invest my time into a kind of connecting all of these pieces together and, and, and kind of promoting. So how about you, Keith? Uh, I'm working on a project called Timekeeper and it is a, uh, a time banking system for communities uh, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm working with our, uh, time banks that are already established. So they have like uh, between 15 and 30 people and, you know, some of them uh, have many more. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm getting these communities to work together and to create community-based projects, right? So through the application, you would be able to find one of these communities, uh, do some work on something that you enjoy doing, and be able to receive help from the platform. Uh, that's my overarching goal and I think that's important because one of the things is I'm trying to have people be aware of how they're spending their time right so a lot of people are spending their time they make money they're basically selling all their time right but now um, you can convert your time into uh, how do you say this like socio-economic capital right so it's what you can do with it right now um, you can help someone receive an hour and all of that's tracked and I think the the reviews uh, would make it easy for that person to receive help later on by being able to show and represent yourself as someone who's a supporter of the community and who's uh, participating in this global framework. Okay, how about you, Liz? Um, can we jump to the other people okay. first and then I'll come to my sub subject? Okay, sure. <laughs> so, uh, Alex, uh, are you working on anything right now related to alternative economy? Okay, uh, wait, uh, you're a little bit quiet for some reason. Uh, Julia, how about you? Uh, you your audio. Okay, audio okay, okay. okay. There. No, uh, it's better. Say, say that again. So, are you working on something related to alternative economy right now? Uh, like an individual project? No, I haven't. Uh, I'm not working on requests quests for anybody right now, but I have been working on... Um, getting things out. I've been trying to get more into Simbi and, uh, you know, have more actual, um, like, provide more services and figure everything out and be able to service more requests and just build myself as a person. Uh, like, I've been learning a lot about doing graphic design uh, from Simbi in particular. I've done, like, two Photoshop jobs for other people, and uh, I, uh, one of my major things that I'm working on right now is I'm... Uh, learning how to produce music, and I've done a bit of that, and I'm working on a pretty big project at the moment. Uh, okay. But that, that's pretty much it, just you know, building my personal network, building my skills, you know, meeting other people, and you know, getting, getting yeah, things that's, done. That's still uh, very cool, uh, very important. Uh, so, do we have Julia? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. So, tell, tell yeah. us, please, how, what are you working on? So yeah, my, my focus um, since I graduated, since before I graduated college was, um, has been, has been understanding like how to improve collaborations and so how we can uh, possibly connect people more easily and so in my own project has been a, uh, in, in creating a system that can improve these collaborations has been a research of itself and there's some of the I, I, I try to create this out of the principles of of um, of uh, alternative economy, and so that's 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 one of the what I strongly strongly care about more than anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for me, um, so I played around with Cindy, and um, I'm very new to Cindy itself. 
And then there's other platforms where I've kind of played around. Um, I, the Simbi itself, um, there's, and this is just a user experience piece. Um, I had set up a service where I could help um, a family with social emotional learning with their young child. And it was a little intimidating because I, there's some work that I've been doing as a nursery school teacher. So there's definitely some value that I could provide to this family, but I'm not necessarily an expert. So it came into this area of like whatever help I did provide, I don't know if it was really valuable. Does it make sense? Um, so there's this piece where I had um, my own issues of kind of going through and understanding um, what was the purpose and if there was intention and overall value provided by my services when given something. The other is I didn't really know where to go and pull other pieces from other people. You know, there's specific things like asking for, um, again, graphic design and, you know, these technical skills, absolutely. But I didn't feel like there's a lot of areas where um, there's exploration into other pieces where it can fulfill my life in some sense, you know, and that may be companionship, uh, friendship, um, time-based um, services, you know, things where I think that there's a lot more variety that I see it possibly benefiting. Um, let's see, and, you know, overall, like, I love the idea. Um, I worked for a long while um, in the permaculture world where, um, for example, building a compost pile could be viewed as value, yep. right? There's this work that takes going into making the compost and um, being a part of a garden that um, evolves very differently than what you have in a traditional environment. You have fruits of your labor at some point, and it's not money. It's eventually your food that you get out of it, right? So it's really easy breaking it down and understanding how does that work and like formulating something that um, can like present that value in the sense that um, it's marketable. Okay, that's really cool actually. And uh, what I'm thinking is uh, way more important to just be ready to give, uh, so to be giver and to actually uh, receive even some fun from that than to concentrate, oh, if my service is, is good enough, if I'm uh, qualified enough, like professional, yeah. uh, because talking about that is more leading to traditional economy, when mm -hmm. in order to work on, on something, you need to be hired, mm -hmm. so pass some, uh, some process when they uh, estimate your skills, but I personally believe that this will, uh, this will uh, no more work uh, as efficient, it, it's not efficient, to be honest, because in my, uh, uh, experience um, what happens on interview and what happens in real work is completely different things so I feel that actually it's one of my also intentions and maybe projects in future to build a system when everyone can join any project only if you want to join mm -hmm. regardless of your skill even rocket science mm -hmm. why, why, why you, why you can work, cannot work on rocket science if you can if you don't know physics you can learn and if you really wa want to do it you will learn super quickly way quicker than in school and in university because you're super motivated mm -hmm. right and so that's why uh, when you start talking about like oh, i'm not sure if i qualified so I, I i believe what's really important is for us to just start to understand that if we want to give and to contribute mm -hmm. and we, we just that should be valuable just go, just do it you know like mm -hmm. just convince someone that hey i want to work on your project Regardless of my skill, I love your project and let's work together, let's collaborate. And this is alternative economy. Mm. So, uh, like, Simbi is just a small piece of big picture. You know, all of these services are just small pieces of big picture, which is just rethinking. We can call it human 2.0. Well, it's going um, back to the original question when we first started, and that is people feeling like they are being valued. Yeah. Right? And and I think that's the major issue throughout the world. You know, we have a tremendous amount of people who are suffering, committing suicide, um, not necessarily being able to get out of depression. Yeah. All of this because they do not feel valuable. Yeah. Right? And so even me going in and using Simbi, I didn't have the confidence to feel like I was valuable to this family. And the reality is I probably was. And it's just more of getting over that hump and like showing that like what value you can provide is outside of just money. And you know, I think it'd be great to kind of know that like encouraging people just to participate and know that they can understand value in a different way and us actually giving credit to that fact. 
um, that you know them giving their time and them just being in a place is valuable. You know, I feel that right now we are we are market alternative economy in in wrong way. Mm. With with, with uh, as it, as someone said, oh, it's kind of like a um, uh, farmer's market. So it's kind of <laughs> optional, right? And this is wrong. I believe alternative economy should be marketed in a way that hey, this is can this is something that can uh, cure you from uh, mental disease. Yeah. Hey, this is something that can uh, you can get rid of uh, let's say a scarcity and like being poor. Mm -hmm. This is like your basic necessity. Alternative yeah. economy. It's not yeah. something. It's not just like toy, you know. Yeah. Uh, One of the best mentors I've had handed me a shovel. You know, and it was at the end of my career, me leaving the corporate world and feeling totally unvaluable. And handed me a shovel and showed me that I could make change just with the work that I did with my hands. And I think that that's the piece that we have to kind of convert this into, is that if you fail in one area, just find another way to contribute. Um, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's value is incredibly important, but it's also sitting down and knowing that, yeah, maybe there is a formula. Maybe there is, you know, telling somebody that if you do little bitty projects that only take 10 minutes out of the day every day, that will give you a little amount of courage and ways to overcome mental health issues. You know, anything from anxiety to other things, you know, but it's really us getting super sophisticated about knowing and acknowledging that it's not just um, blanket value at the surface level, it goes much deeper. And money, I think, is just surface. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, dear external guest, do you have uh, anything to add to that? Julia, Alex? Uh, I think everything's really been covered so far, honestly. <laughs> okay, Julia? As a conclusion, I, I I don't know what to add. Any really? I think I think everything's been roughly covered. Okay. Okay. Then uh, yeah. Then thank you, everyone. And this was really a really cool uh, discussion. And yeah. let's do it again uh, the, sometime soon. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you guys. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> See you, bye. Bye.